Look, I get it. You're running a successful business, but you're constantly stressed about where the money is going or where it should be going. So should you hire a bookkeeper? As one of my clients puts it, Colin, I love working with numbers, but working with my dollars makes me nauseous. Wow, business owners, we wear many hats. The owner, the manager, salesperson, administrator, customer service, benefits manager, and bookkeeper. Wait, bookkeeper? Are you running a successful business but you're doing your own books? Are you doing your own books because you're a solo entrepreneur? Stop right now. What about your CPA? Is your CPA also your bookkeeper? I would think twice about that. This week, I got the chance to catch up with Parker Stevenson. Parker is a managing partner and the chief business officer at Evolve Finance, a bookkeeping firm in California specializing in helping online entrepreneurs build a more profitable and stable online business. Stick around as we discuss how to handle bookkeeping as a small business owner. Colin Exelby, Certified Financial Planner here, and I own the virtual advisory practice Celestial Wealth Management, where we provide financial planning to business owners and their families that just makes sense. And today we're talking about bookkeeping and small business. Now we all hear from politicians all the time that small business is the lifeblood of America. And you know why? According to this data, this data is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Small businesses created 10 and a half million net new jobs between 2000 and 2019. And that accounts for 65% of net new jobs created since 2000. Sometimes that's just mind-blowing stat. 19.9% of businesses are owned by women, and that number is growing. But 20% of new businesses close within a year. And while many businesses will find short-term success, only a handful have long-term staying power. Just 34% of businesses make it to their 10th anniversary. And many times it isn't the lack of sales that's causing businesses to close, it's managing the cash flow of the business properly. That's why today I'm bringing you an expert on how small business owners should handle bookkeeping, Mr. Parker Stevenson. Welcome, Parker. Colin, thank you so much for having me. Got the applause, I love it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Um, Parker is the managing partner and chief business officer at Evolve Finance, which is a bookkeeping firm specializing in helping online entrepreneurs to build more profitable and financially stable online businesses. For over seven years, I can't believe it's that long already, seven years, Parker's been advising some of the top coaches, course creators, influencers, and thought leaders on how to make more sound business decisions using their data. And before Evolved, Parker spent five years at Adidas America, where he became the U.S. product manager for golf footwear. So with that being said, Parker, why don't you give us just a little overview of what it is that you guys do at Evolve Finance and who you serve best? Yeah, so uh, Colin, thank you for the great intro. Um, for, for Evolve Finance, it, we really niche down to uh, serving online businesses. I give all the credit to my business partner, Corey, on doing that 11 years ago when he started um, this little bookkeeping firm. Um, but he was serving online businesses before anyone else really was. The reason we kind of focused on that niche is because like any business model, there's kind of nuances to it. And what we found is a lot of bookkeepers didn't really understand what to do with the merchant accounts and the CRMs and how to categorize certain expenses for these new businesses that were kind of popping up in the online space. And, you know, like you had mentioned, now we've been, you know, we work with some of the top people who are course creators and influencers and thought leaders and coaches and consultants and these sort of online service or online information based businesses. And we've just watched the industry absolutely blow up over the at least the last seven years that I've been involved in the business and have just been blown away um, by the amount of money and and just the the quality of businesses that these people are able to build when just seven years ago, most people would be like, you can make money on the internet. So <laughs> it's come a long way. And that is correct. I can't believe now we think about that. Like 
wow, this is really possible. And you have so many people, like you said, that have just outstanding businesses that are all virtual, that are built off of the internet. But along with that, when you start growing and you get the successful business, right? You're as a business owner, you've got so many different things that you're doing. Um, oftentimes we can we can divide ourselves too thin, right? And so you become kind of this jack of all trades and a master of none. And that's not a good formula for success. So I would ask you, how can a competent bookkeeper add value to a business owner? Very few people start businesses because they're pumped to work in spreadsheets and <laughs> and like get to know QuickBooks online or, or get to know Zero or whatever bookkeeping software, right? I, I think a lot of business owners do it because um, maybe they don't trust someone else to do it or maybe they can't afford to do it in the early stages of their business, but they at least know someone's got to be tracking what's going on with cash flow in my business. And usually I think most business owners are just thinking about it from a tax perspective. They're just going, well, we got to put the books together so that way the accountant can file the taxes and I don't go to jail for tax fraud. And that's a great goal. Don't go to jail over your business. Definitely a great <laughs> thing to uh, want to uh, try to achieve in your business. But um, what we found is that bookkeeping, it's so much more important than just getting you ready for taxes. It's meant to show you what is the financial health of my business? How is money flowing through the business? How much money have we made? How much money have we spent? And that takes some some skill. Like you, you have to have an, a, a real kind of understanding and knowledge around bookkeeping that maybe in the early stages of your business, your business is just getting going, that uh, maybe you can do that yourself in a spreadsheet. I never recommend anyone try to use bookkeeping software or business owners don't try to use bookkeeping software because they'll probably screw up their books more than if they just did it in a spreadsheet. But especially once your business starts to get into that six-figure realm and especially beyond, that's where it's like getting a bookkeeper in, especially a bookkeeper who knows your business model. Like if you have a restaurant, I'm going to go find a bookkeeper that actually has done the books for a bunch of other restaurants so that they can use their expertise to really put the data together in a way that's going to uh, help you understand the business better, but also make sure they're they're thinking about the things financially that a restaurant owner needs to be aware of that maybe just a general bookkeeper wouldn't be able to think about because they maybe they're just working with any business that comes their way. They're kind of going to do a crappy job of doing the books for every one of their clients instead of doing a really good job for one specific type of client. So that's where I think as your business grows and you're thinking about, well, what are you spending your time on? Should you really be the one spending time doing your bookkeeping when you don't really know how to do it that well? And then what's the value a bookkeeper really can be providing you aside from saving you time with, with our service? We um, really are trying to not just get the books ready for for their you know our clients' taxes. We want them to understand their numbers so they can make better business decisions, be more profitable. And you just can't do that if you don't have a good bookkeeping system in place. I mean, that's Spot on. And I think your point of having a bookkeeper that works with the type of business that you're in is is really good because we talk about that with with financial advisory firms and wealth management firms is, you know, you can have firms that specialize in working with corporate executives and or retirees or um, sales professionals or college planning or business owners. And you can't be really, really good at all of those. You can be okay, but you can't be really, really good. So, um, you know, I think that is a really good point of finding a bookkeeper that, you know, works with businesses that are like yours. And I always say, I, like, I don't know if you believe this or not, but kind of if you are starting off and you are doing the books yourself, you know, getting a little bit of experience around that is important too. So you understand kind of what, reports would be good to have, what numbers are good to track, and you do it a little bit yourself, but as soon as you can get moving to having a professional helping you, I think the better. Yeah, I just think as business owners, our time is so valuable, um, especially as your business grows. And in, in the early stages of a business, again, you have to do all the things, unless you're getting funding or you have money saved up and you're just gonna start hiring people and, and building out the business a little faster than maybe your revenue is growing at um, because you can afford to do that. Great, but for everyone else, especially our clients in the online space, uh, you don't need a lot of money up front to get a business going um, because you don't need an office space, you don't need to buy inventory. Um, it's just get your website up, get some software going, and you can start serving clients and or selling digital offers. Um, but I think for you know our clients, um, they can. It's actually an easy trap to fall into when you don't have a lot of overhead to start doing all of the things. But eventually, as your business starts to, to generate more revenue, 
that revenue is probably coming in because you as the business owner have figured out how to drive revenue. And so the more you can free up your time to focus on those revenue generating activities, the faster your business is going to grow and likely the more profitable it's going to be. But again, a bookkeeper that actually knows your business model and is really competent is going to be worth their weight in gold because, again, it's not just about saving you time. The more money your business makes, the more important it becomes that you have clarity on how is money moving in and out of this business. Are the decisions that I'm making in my business actually helping this business to become more profitable and make sure it's taking care of my team, but also making sure this business is taking care of myself as the business owner. And I think a lot of the times people will just look at a bookkeeper and go, ah, eh, we'll just pay the cheapest and you get what you're paid for, right? Whether it's your accountant, your lawyer, your bookkeeper, if you just look for the cheapest, they're not gonna really add value. But I think especially as your business grows, a good bookkeeper almost becomes an insurance policy because we, we can trust the data we're looking at. We can trust that when we're making decisions from these numbers that it's not, put together by someone who doesn't get our business model or is taking shortcuts with how they're organizing that data. And so that's where, you know, as your business grows, it becomes more and more and more important that we can trust that data and that the books are actually getting done in a reasonable amount of time that we're not waiting for you as the business owner four months later to start reconciling your books because you just didn't have time to do it. Um, I think if you are going to be making really smart, prudent, um, sort of data-driven decisions in your business, which I think we all have to, as business owners, do more of that as our businesses grow. Um, having someone who really knows what's going on in your business and is experienced um, as a bookkeeper, again, I think it's worth their weight in gold. And I think entrepreneurs overall, uh, in general, sometimes look at bookkeeping as, as commodity instead of looking at it as an actual value add to your business that's actually going to help you make more money and keep more of the money that you're bringing in. I mean, that's, those are all great points as well. And, you know, it, at my firm, we're always about trying to figure out how we can keep more money for our clients. And I remember when I first started this company and I was running the books myself, one of the things I was thinking about was, am I doing this right? And I'm in finance and I'm like, am I doing this right? I, I need somebody else to bounce these ideas off of and make sure that I'm doing this stuff correctly. And you know, sometimes that's when people reach out to try to find a wealth manager is they're doing things on their own but they have questions about like what else is out there what am i missing what am i not seeing that's you know you're spot on of like where a competent bookkeeper that knows your industry can really help so um you know well done there uh you mentioned something that as a business approaches or gets into six figures um you know i kind of wanted to ask you what level of revenue or complexity of a business should somebody say, we need to look into hiring a bookkeeper or is it right out of the gate? Like, let's just hire it and be done with it. You know, as soon as we start the business. I, it's probably, it's not a great sales strategy for us as a bookkeeping company, but I think an accountant is, is usually the first place. Like if you're starting a business, the accountant is who you hire first because we all have to pay taxes and we've seen not great things happen for people who try to do taxes on their own and think, oh, I'll figure it out or I can do this. And then it's like, <laughs> there's a very high likelihood that if you are not a trained tax preparer, you will mess something up and it'll come back to bite you in the butt. So I think making sure we understand the responsibility we have as business owners to pay our taxes, getting a tax professional involved in your business as early as possible is always smart. I, I think there's not maybe a number from a bookkeeping perspective, but I think once you're relying on your business as a full-time income, like this is how you pay your bills is, is through your business that you have more to lose versus someone who it's like, Hey, I got a business. It's a side hustle. I do it while I'm still working my full-time job. I'll do the books myself. Yeah, maybe it's not as as important because you still have a full time income and you're just kind of like bootstrapping uh, this this side business. But I think as soon as you're in your business full time and you're relying on it for your income, then again, that's where we have to like really, I think, take ownership of the responsibility we have for our businesses, which is is this business financially uh, responsible? Do we have the systems in place for this business legally, financially, um, to make sure that we're playing the game by the rules that the IRS and the government wants to play by because we don't want to be breaking rules that we aren't aware of because again, you can't be an expert at everything in your business when this is a business that literally it's how you, you feed your family or how you pay your bills. That number typically for our clients, it's around when they get to that hundred thousand dollar mark where a lot of our clients are going to be moving out of 
part-time jobs or full-time jobs and really diving into their businesses uh, full-time. And, and it's at that point that we're like, it's for sure going to be beneficial and valuable to have a bookkeeper because you will have to get more strategic with your decision-making if you want your business to be able to continue to grow. Um, and, and sometimes that's not just going out and making more money. It is, it's, Sometimes it is making more money and generating more revenue, but making sure we have the information we need to make sure we're making that money efficiently. We're making that money profitably. And that's definitely something that um, a lot of business owners don't realize until it's too late that sometimes the solution isn't just go make more sales. Um, I, I think when you're making a full-time income from your business, you owe it to yourself to make sure that you're clear that making more sales will actually drive the bottom line as well. And that we're not just spinning our wheels making more sales, but not really keeping anything for ourselves from that, if that makes sense. I mean, it completely makes sense. And unfortunately, that's what happens with a lot of business owners, because we all get brought into this hustle, 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 sell, 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 sell. And if you are only focused on that, you forget a lot of the reasons why you got into the business for yourself, whether it was the, the freedom to do what you want when you want or the freedom to control the where how the money is flowing through things. And, you know, the business can end up controlling you and not in a good way. Um, so that that does make a lot of sense. And, you know, and rather than just saying the, the number is 100,000 of revenue and then you need to go to a bookkeeper, it's a little bit more complex, you know, than that. But I think both of us are kind of saying, sooner rather than later is probably the way to think about it. Um, you know, if you're really serious about running a successful business. So uh, yeah, you, and I think and I think that's a key piece cause just like being like, how serious about are you about this business growing? Like, how serious are you about serving more people making more income for yourself, being able to hire the team and support that you need for this business to be able to scale, you need financial visibility for that. And if you don't have good bookkeeping, you can't do that. Again, if this is my full time income and my family's livelihood is reliant on this. I want my ducks in a row. I want to do these things right. So I have the visibility into what uh, we're doing as a company to make sure we are moving the business in a good direction. And we're not like three, four years down the road and then going, ah, oh, crap, we didn't see that. I wish we had understood that or known that whether it's a legal thing, a financial thing that comes back to bite you in the butt later on. And I'm not trying to scare the heck out of everyone listening, like something's going to get you, you better be ready. Um, but I think again, just taking that responsibility seriously as a business owner that yeah, you got to go out and gener generate sales and that's your biggest responsibility, but making sure we're clear that like there's the other parts of running a business that we don't always, we're not always aware we're signing up for when we start our businesses uh, that we just want to make sure we're, we're jumping on as soon as the business is financially ready, ready to do that. Makes a lot of sense. That's what we're trying to do is make sense. We're doing it here. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things you were you you mentioned there, I was thinking about because you said you know one of the first places people go is the CPA that you're working with, and a lot of times that could be a CPA you used to work for a corporation in, as a W two employee nine to five, and that was your CPA, and they're great with that kind of stuff. And then you started your side hustle, you created this business, it's growing, it's becoming successful. You leave that nine to five job, you're you're with that same CPA who maybe was really good with W-2 employees, but maybe not as much so with business owners. You know, some are very good at a lot of different, some are not. But, uh, you know, the, the first thought is, like you said, let's go to a CPA and my CPA and have them do our books for us. But a lot of times what I think is that the, the CPA's job is tax planning and tax prep not so much running the books. Can you talk a little bit about whether really the CPA should be your bookkeeper or maybe you should keep those separate? Oh, I could talk for a long time about that column, but um, I, I think what, if there's like kind of a, an underlying theme here that's coming up, right? It's like you want people involved in your business that understand your business model, right? Like even you as a financial planner, you work with a lot of small business owners. Like that's something you focus on. So you can bring a level of expertise and understanding to your clients that again, like you said, maybe a financial planner who works and it just kind of does it for generally for whoever they're going to miss things. They're going to miss opportunities because they don't understand um, the full complexity of someone who's building their wealth from a business versus someone who's an executive or just thinking about retirement and is even working anymore or whatever it may be. So with accountants, I think, again, 
just as important that your accountant understands your business model and actually knows what's going on from a tax standpoint. But again, your, your CPA or your accountant, that is their goal is to do tax planning. That is their focus is to prepare you for your taxes. And hopefully if you're, it just depends on the level of service you're paying for with your accountant, they're kind of putting strategies in place to make sure that they are uh, legally limiting the amount of taxes you're paying and setting yourself up to uh, keep as much of the money that you earn as possible. But that being said, when we found that CPAs do bookkeeping, their goal is to just get the books done well enough for them to file your taxes. Most accountants, and, and that's changing a little bit, but most accountants' roles are not to be your CFO or to do financial planning or to help you understand your numbers. Their goal is just to go, okay, what do we? here's what we owe in taxes. Let's make sure we pay this and let's put some strategies in place to make that tax bill as low as we can. So a lot of the times people, or business owners, I think like the idea of their accountant and bookkeeper all being in one place, but right. accountants make their money filing taxes. They don't really typically make their money from doing bookkeeping. So they don't really have the systems, the processes, the checks and balance in place to make sure that the bookkeeping team that works for them is actually doing the bookkeeping in a way that is going to help you as the business owner to understand your, your numbers and make sure that you're getting your reports on time every month, making sure that if you have questions about what's going on with your business financially, um, they can answer those because they're not just thinking about taxes. They're thinking about, well, yeah, here's your, your profit and loss statement. This is typically what we see is your profitability should be here or your labor cost should be here. And so that's why we're usually big. And I, I know this sounds super biased, but we're usually big fans of having your bookkeeper and accounting firm being separate because a bookkeeper's goal is to make sure your data is accurate and it's organized in a way that actually makes sense for your business. So that doesn't mean there's not CPAs out there that have great bookkeeping services and, and do those things. But our experience has been their focus is on tax returns. They make their money filing taxes and doing tax strategy. So their bookkeeping services tend to not have the intention behind them to actually deliver a great experience for their customers. So um, I, I think it's worth a little bit of inconvenience a lot of the time to have your bookkeeper be separate from your CPA. So your bookkeeper is actually delivering on what they're promising. And then the accountant can focus on their zone of expertise, which is tax prep. Smart people, smart business owners surround themselves with other smart people in their network, on their team. And you know we're on both coasts here as we're having this interview. And last weekend, I went up to New York for the Army Navy game. Um, it's a football game that I've gone to every single year. My father is a West Point alum, go Army, oh, nice. beat Navy. It was, we didn't do it this past year, but, uh, and I'm in Maryland, which is a huge, you know, Navy area. Uh, so I'm kind of caught in the middle there, but I was there a little bit early. I got up on like a 45 foot Navy boat, a speed boat. And the, the guy who was up there he was like, you know, have any questions? And I was like, yeah, you got all the nav equipment over here. You have the steering wheel in the center. And then you have the throttles over here on the right. Like, you know, what do you do? And, and you know, are you doing all these things? And he said, no, we have specialists. So the, the first year guy is on the nav system. And the second year guy, I believe is what he said, is on the steering wheel. And the, the second or third year guy is on the throttle. And I, I said to him, so you're saying that the guy who is running the throttle doesn't have his hand on the steering wheel at all. And he was like, no. And I'm like, I can't imagine driving like you're driving a car and like somebody else would be putting the gas pedal while you're steering. But the whole idea there is the specialization of one task, know that task inside and out, how to do it. And he said, once you get going with it, it's like peanut butter and jelly. It goes together. It's nice and easy. And I'm probably never going to forget that he said that. This, you know, well, and, 19 year and old telling me <laughs> if you're looking at ship size as like the size of a business, if you have a little a little like fishing boat, yeah, you get to steer and accelerate and do all that in one place because it's small enough that you only need one person. But as the ship gets bigger, then you do need more of those specific areas of expertise. So I think that's actually a really perfect analogy. And I think business owners always love the idea of all in one. I actually did a whole podcast on this um, uh, last year and it's like, yes, I just want everything in one place. I want one software that does everything. I want one accountant that does everything. I want one operations manager who does everything uh, because it feels like it's gonna simplify um, our business's complexity. But what it ends up doing is whatever that all in one service all in one contractor is, is really doing for you is um, again kind of doing a crappy job of doing a lot of things instead of actually helping you to 
have the pieces in your business where each piece is being operated and, and managed as effectively and expertly as it possibly can. There's a balance here. I think, again, depends on the size of your business and where you're at. But I think as our businesses grow, the more, like you said, Colin, we can bring experts into the different areas of your business. Um, I, I think the return on investment is just way higher versus just getting generalists and all in one sort of situations going in your business. Um, let's shift gears here a second um, as we kind of move to the home stretch here. And one of the questions that I get a lot from business owners that are expanding and we start talking about payroll is, you know, do I just use QuickBooks for payroll? You know, should I use one of these other services? Do you have any recommendations, you know, since you work with so many different business owners on payroll providers? Can you do any? Yeah, I mean, I guess it, it does definitely depends on uh, the type of business you are running. Um, for the clients we serve, we really like Gusto. Um, we found Gusto and we're not even like, like I don't even have like, we should probably have an affiliate thing or something going on with them. But uh, we found like the big two, which are ADP and paychecks. Um, they're just, I think, they're, they're a little behind in terms of the customer service for small businesses because paychecks and ADP are also huh. doing the, the payroll for like Amazon. And right, well, that's Facebook. true, yeah. You know, you know they're, so they're more focused on their largest clients. Um, we actually just talked with an ADP rep recently um, where they're kind of bringing out more of a small business division to give more focus and attention to um, small businesses, which I think is really smart, um, especially with some of the stats that you provided um, at the start of the podcast here or the video. But Gusto just in terms of interface, in terms of customer service, uh, in terms of ease of use and cost, we've just found it to kind of be the the best option for smaller businesses. But obviously, if you're like running a huge manufacturing business, ADP or paychecks may be a much better option. Most of our clients at their biggest would have maybe 15, 20 employees. Our, we have 16 or 17 people on payroll for our company and Gusto's been awesome. It's been really, really great. And their software is really intuitive. Can't say the same for ADP and paychecks. Trying to do that yourself, you end up uh, having to really rely on their customer service. And if you've ever called into a payroll provider's customer service, it can be a little bit of a frustrating experience. So um, nobody's perfect, uh, and, and Gusto is is not you know necessarily perfect by any means. But we've dealt, we've logged into so many different type of payroll providers, and, and Gusto just is is I think uh, what we found to be the best for small businesses. Okay, great. And, you know, we'll put uh, a link to Gusto down in the notes so that anybody who's watching this wants to check them out, uh, we can go ahead and do that. Um, we're, it's about time now. I mean, I, this was great. I'm glad we were finally able to connect, uh, get together, uh, you know, virtually talk about this. And thanks for dropping all your knowledge for all the business owners out there. If people want to get more information about you guys and your firm, where should they go? evolvedfinance.com e-v-o-l-v-e-d evolvedfinance.com that's the best place to start and we actually just launched um, on our website you'll see it under the learn category a free audio course you download it on your phone just like a podcast uh, I believe it's either 15 or 16 episodes and it literally will just walk you through like how do you create this financial foundation in your business and how do you get better at the financial side of your business? Uh, it's probably something we should be selling, but we're giving it away for free because we just know how hard it is to get, um, I think, good financial advice on small businesses on the internet. So uh, we're just trying to spread the love on that. So I highly recommend if anyone's interested on, well, how does this whole bookkeeping finance stuff work for a small business, uh, especially for online businesses, that that audio course uh, would be a great place to start. And it's just on our website, evolvefinance.com. Perfect. People love free. Go get it. <laughs> Watch it over the weekend. Well, hopefully you guys like this. Um, you know, I would love to see in the comments from business owners, are you doing the books yourself? If you are, let me know how you're handling that and let us know down in the comments. And if you're contemplating hiring a bookkeeper, what is the number one thing that's holding you back from doing it? Put it in the comments below. Love to hear from that. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And of course, Got to smash that subscribe button, baby. Smash the subscribe button. Hit that little bell so you know whenever I release a new financial planning and investment video. And hey, if you love this interview and got a lot out of it, make sure you check out this interview next and these videos to learn more. Get clear. Be clear. Be clear.